hey guys welcome to the scholar online youtube channel the channel that is all about learning in today's video i'm going to do something really really interesting that i've been thinking about for quite some time now i'm going to build you a voice assistant right here on this channel from scratch step by step i'm going to take you through this code using the most simplest of libraries to get you a talking assistant right now um just stick around to the end of the video so you can learn how to do that uh, but before we get into it um let's just get through the administration part um remember to like this video that you're watching um give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so that you get notified every time that we release a new video on this channel and if you um go down on the video that you're watching of course that's the like button that's the one you gotta smash and um and subscribe to our channel right and if you go to the bottom of the video you'll see a subs description box okay so if you hear me say i'm going to link into the description below that's where you're going to find it generally most of the useful links that we go through in our tutorial i will link in the description below right and if you scroll a little bit lower i'll try and add some timestamps as well although youtube does a better job nowadays of actually creating sort of you know um you know breaks in the video and and including that in the description so make sure that you check out the description and of course in there you'll find uh, you know our information our social media and if you want to get in touch with us you know you can use any one of those and you'll be lucky if you get any response but anyway let's get to it so before we get started i want to actually show you the application that we're going to build right it is a streamlit application if you're familiar with python streamlit it's one of the simplest most straightforward you know web sort of um, you know, um, libraries out there to build something very, very simple. Hence, I use it because I want this to be even something that a beginner that hasn't coded before can follow along and build this. Okay. So this is as simple as it gets. Right. And, um, on the application, you see there's, there's some text at the top there. We're talking about the voice assistant and then there's a voice recorder there. Okay. So I'm going to click this voice recorder and then we'll see what happens. So let me just think of a question. I'm going to ask it. Hi, can you tell me a little bit more about Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency? So basically, after I've clicked the recording, there's quite a couple of things that happen. In the background, the recording has technically been um, saved and already it has gone to OpenAI and OpenAI has come up with a response. So just to keep you guys busy in the meantime, I've actually printed out the response that we get from open AI. But what's happening in the background now is I'm using the text to voice to read this and we're going to play it back. All right. So I asked a question. I got a response. I, it gets printed out in text and there's a voice response that you can click and then you can hear what the AI said about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency that was created in 2009 by an unknown person using the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. It is the first and most well-known cryptocurrency, and it operates on a peer-to-peer -peer network without the need for a central authority or intermediary. Okay, so I could play this until the end, but it's going to take a whole minute. So because it's just the intro part of the video, when you guys are playing around with the application, feel free to do anything that you want to do with it, all right? I'm going to actually restart this and ask a bit of a shorter question that will go by a little bit quicker. Something like, yeah, tell me a joke, all right? Hi, can you tell me a nice, respectable and fun joke? All right. So that should go fairly, fairly a little bit quicker than the um, reading of the cryptocurrency. Well, here's the joke. It's already back and we can read sure. it. Here's a lighthearted joke for you. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have the guts. <laughs> so this is fun. Hey, so imagine you could build your very own voice activated assistant um on a web browser and of course you can use the exact same principle to build it on a mobile device because i suppose this would be way more fun on a mobile device so i want to take you through the process of exactly how i built this application i generally like to start with the working application and then work backwards all right so let's get started there's a couple of things that you're going to need to get started all right so I've, I've broken down the tutorial into the little steps that we're going to use. So Streamlit is the web browser that we're going to use to build all of this. Like I said, it's one of the simplest ways to do this specifically in Python, right? So we can just write everything in one place, all right? And we're going to use a recorder library, all right? We could have built our own recorder library, but we're going to use 
a third party library to do this and I actually came across a couple libraries and I'll show you the ones I came across and I'll show you the one that we are going to use for this. All right. And then there's a couple of browser limitations that I came across when I tried to build this the first time. It actually took me a long time this morning to sort that out. I will uh, uh, take you through that and show you how to resolve those type of browser issues. And then after that, we are going to test that the recorder works because we're going to do this step by step. The first step is just to record our voice and make sure that we get a recorded voice. After we've done that, we're going to just transcribe that recording. So if you um, watch the video that we did last week. I showed you how you can get a transcription using open AI, um, voice to text library. So if you have a voice or a speech, you can turn it into a text using the transcription library. So I'll show you how to do that and, and get a text output from a voice. So the voice that we record here, we're going to convert that into a text into, into like, um, you know, TXT, and then we're going to take that text and we're going to call the api and do the normal chat completion so this is just when you would have typed in a text and got a text in response so i think you remember that when we built that application so check check our videos because there's a video where we did we done that in streamlit specifically showing you how to build a chatbot just being able to talk and have the chatbot respond back but everything was in text so we typed text and we got text back and in this specific case now that we've gotten the voice we've converted it to text we are going to do the exact same thing and get a response in text right and that's a text response that I displayed that you show me displaying over here, right? So after we, we write and display that text, then we need to um, call another API. This is now a text to voice API. This is the last part of the loop, all right? And this is what API just recently released like in November this year, where you can actually take a text and convert it to a voice, right? And 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 read out it. So you can use this to like you can feed it any voice, um, you know, I mean any text, a book or whatever, and it can read it for you. So what we do is that we take this text, we feed it to the thing, uh, to the API, to the third API, and then we get a voice recording back, and then we play back the voice recording, which is what we did over there. So there's like a couple of things happening in the background, at least three APIs are we calling, all right? The voice the 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 voice to text, the text com chat completion, and then the text to voice. So three different APIs. And then we've got a perfectly working application in Streamlit. And once you've seen how we've done it in Streamlit, you can apply the same principle to any other web browser, right? Uh, if we can get through the web browser sort of complications. And I can see so many use cases for this type of application. Personally, I would just love to be able to transcribe meetings and things like that. Like have this AI sit in meetings for me and take notes for me, right? From the voices that it's hearing in the meeting and then later on play it back to me as if I was in the meeting. That would be fun, right? So anyway, um, let's get started. So the first thing that you need to get started is um, I'm going to show you how to do this using a virtual private server, right? Um, you could do this on localhost. Probably you'll have less issues with it, specifically with the browser issues. Um, but if you one of our, my regulars, you maybe already have a virtual private server, right? Because I like to build a lot of these things far away from my personal computer, right? So that's what we're going to do. If you don't generally build with me and you don't have a virtual private server, you can check some of the videos in our channel. There's a video where you can search for VPS setup and stuff like that in my in my channel and you can see videos around how to create and set up a virtual server a virtual server is just a computer that um, is sitting somewhere else in a cloud environment where you can connect to it at any time and do whatever you want to do in that virtual computer and you don't do it on your own personal computer because i write so much code it's easier for me to write it on all these other computers out there in the cloud right otherwise you can also just do this in your own personal computer so either way it doesn't matter you can follow along whatever your setup is okay but the prerequisites okay so maybe let me just like put a note up here to just check your prerequisites and you need to have this um for, so you need a computer of course you know whether it's a vps or a personal computer you need python um 3.8 installed at least because i think the Streamlit library needs a Python 3.8. It won't work with, with, with the Python sooner than that. So just inside of your computer. So let me just stop the application here. All right, let me clear. And you can just check the Python version. I 
pink um, version like that. And you can see the version that I've got is 3.8.1.0. Okay, so this is going to be sufficient. Otherwise, you can just install this Python version. If you don't know how to do that, you can just Google or ask ChatGPT how to install, you know, the latest Python. And then the next thing that you're going to need is a virtual environment. So once you've decided that this is, you've got Python, this is where you're going to work from, um, you need to create something that we call a virtual environment. Now, this I've also shown you many, many times how to do it. Um, it's not particularly important if you're like doing this for the first time, maybe let me not confuse you. You can actually just install all these things globally, but it's not a good idea, right? So to do virtual environment, I've got videos showing you in my channel how to do that. Um, but basically you can even search for it as well um, on, 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 the, on the internet, how to install virtual environment. But it's very, very simple. Even ChatGPT can help you do that. And then once you've installed a virtual environment, you're going to use. So, so the prerequisites over here is Python 3.8. It's a virtual environment right which you need to activate once you have installed it all right so you're gonna install it and then you're going to activate it i don't want to go through all these steps now because it will make my video two hours long okay so let's just assume these are your prerequisites and make sure you have these these before you get started and then after that you need to then activate your virtual environment like my environment i called streamlit env and i've activated it and you'll see it in 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 in, in, in commas like that right so once you've done that um the other steps i can show you you need to have open ai are installed and this one is actually easy if you don't have it once you've created your virtual environment you can just do pip install open ai and if you've installed open ai before um you might want to just run the same command and i think it's upgrade or something like that upgrade like that so it will um upgrade the version of open ai that you have to the latest one because you're going to need the latest one alternatively you could if you had already installed open ai you could uninstall so you could do pip un um install un install open ai and then reinstall it or you could just install it on top of it and it will upgrade it to the latest version but make sure you run this command because the older versions of open ai are not going to have these new libraries the way i'm doing it okay so once you've got an open ai updated and installed you're going to need streamlit okay so Streamlit, this is one of the links I will have in the video. And I'll try, I'll put links to videos where I show you how to do a virtual, your virtual environment setup. So I'll put a link in the, in the description of the video. In case you want to do it the way I'm doing it, you can, you know, do that. Otherwise, these are optional. This is optional. You know, you could just do this globally. And as, as long as you have 3.8, you could go straight into installing OpenAI and go into is installing Streamlit and this will still work. Okay. So Streamlit, I will link this as well in the uh, description of the video below. This is a web framework um, py uh, powered by Python. And it's one of the easiest ones you'll come across. All you need to do is just install you know, um, streamlit, I mean, install it and you install it say, using pip install. All right. I don't know why they don't have it in here. There you go. You use it, you do pip install streamlit. So if you, if I copy that and I can just paste that in here and pip install streamlit and paste it like that. All right. So just run that command, which is what you're going to need to install streamlit. Okay. So I've pretty much installed it. So I'm not going to install it again. You saw it. It was already running on my, on my device. So I'm not going to install it again. And so that's a prerequisite. And then the, the, the last prerequisite that you need is the video recorder because streamlit is a Python library that is open source. Okay. For creating web, simple web frameworks of web applications in Python. Now you might find that, um, I mean, Streamlit, it has a lot of components and these components are pre-built. All right. And pre-built using actual JavaScript libraries. And then they are imported into Streamlit to work within Python. Now, Streamlit doesn't have each and every single component you will need up there. And one of the components that doesn't come uh, built into Streamlit is the voice recorder. 
So I had to actually look for, I, I even asked ChatGPT how to do voice recording and it, it asked me to, it showed me how to build my own, um, you know, you could build your own, you know, component in React and then import it and it showed me how to do that. I said, no, that's way too much work. So the nice thing about Streamlit is that there is a lot of, there's a huge active community and this is what I love about coding in Python. The very active and vibrant Streamlit Python community that actually builds a lot of these components that you could just reuse someone else's component. So I came across this really cool one and um and I looked at it and it was released in January 24, 2023. So it's a pretty recent um library so it will work with sort of like your more later versions of of Python. And this is the one that actually then requires Python 3.8. I read that in here some way. I just can't remember. There you go. So it requires Python 3.8 upwards. So therefore, you know, if you had an older version of Python, it might not work with it. Hence, you need the, because it's the, the later version. And it's very, very simple how it works. You saw my recorder there. And, um, and, it, and, and it's just like two lines of code. You'll just import it into your, into your file, and then you can immediately just run it and play back your recording. So this is the, we're going to run this function, but before we run it, we need to do the pip install audio recorder streamlet. Okay. So I'm going to just copy this and we're going to go into our virtual environment where you, where you got your virtual environment activated, where you have installed streamlet and all of these other things. We are going to uh, pip install audio recorder streamlet okay so i'm going to put this in the notes as well and say this is also the other library that you're going to need so these are all your prerequisites to get this application up and running and i'm not going to install it because i've already installed it so in your case you could just run enter and then it will do all of that installation for you if you if it asks you yes or no later on you could just say yes and then you'll be good to go, right? So now that I've done all of that, we can actually get started. And I'm going to um, actually, you know, um, remove all of this, what I've written, all right? And I'm going to start from scratch. I don't wanna delete it completely because I might wanna <laughs> refer to it so I don't have to think too hard. We're gonna start building a brand new application from scratch, which has nothing on it. And I'm gonna show you step by step how we got from nothing to this working application that I just demonstrated to you right there, okay? So the first step is we need to get the audio thing working because these are the three steps we need to follow, right? If you remember my notes, we're gonna need the recorder library. We're gonna need to test the recorder uh, make sure that it works, transcribe it. So three steps. So the first step, number one, is just the library. So to do that, um, I'm just going to copy this code exactly as it is inside from the documentation. And I will link for you this documentation to this library in the, um, in the description of the video. So I'm just going to paste this exactly as it is over there. And I'm going to show you what is in here. So import Streamlit as ST. This is the, the Streamlit library we just installed over there. Import it. Now we are importing it and we're going to refer to it as ST because we don't want to be typing Streamlit every time. And then this is the second library that we just installed now, which is this one, the audio recorder Streamlit. All right, it's this library over there, and then we need to, to import the audio recorder part of it. And then it's just very simple. We just call that audio recorder, right? And it actually creates a recording in bytes, all right? And then we can use a built-in method within Streamlit. This is a Streamlit built-in method, streamlit.audio, to play back. So this is one of the components that have been pre-built. Like I said, Streamlit has got pre-built components. Some of the common ones are already in there. This one is now a a third library component and this is an existing component so there's be two components in here this one will do the recording and then this one will play back the recording for us okay so this is from streamlit this is from a third party very very simple lines of code and we're going to run this application right so this is where we're going to run our application all right i'm going to remove the original um actually let's just call it app.py right i'm going to remove the original app.py because i'm going to create a new app.py and you can call this anything but app.py is the simplest thing for me to remember and i'm just going to copy this code in there 
and once you've done this how simple it is to run a streamlit application you just say streamlit run app.py that simple so the file where you saved all of your information and use a streamlit command you'll have it functional after you've installed and activated your environment where you've installed it and then as soon as you run it i'm running it in a virtual environment or a virtual v a private server um so it will show me my url to the to the private server and then you just sort of copy it like that and then you go anywhere on any browser right and then you paste it at the top there and then you run it okay so what's happening here is there's only just that one record record thing because i actually only it created one component but this component remember only gets displayed if so this is a python if statement which means this component is not going to be displayed until this audio bytes has got something in it so as soon as i'm done recording this if audio bytes statement will now be true and then the audio recording will show this is a good way to sort of like you know make sure that you don't rec you don't display the, the recorder before you actually have a recording to display you understand so these are three lines but they're very very like straightforward right you, you you have a recorder and this recorder will record once there's something inside of the recorder this will be true and then the the player will will display and then you'll be able to play back what you just recorded okay so let's let's record something like Hi, it feels like a wonderful day today. Why do you think about that? So as soon as I stop recording and I close that, you'll see the recorder will display uh, because now the recording is true. There's a recorder to display and you can play your recording back. Hi, it feels like a wonderful day today. Why do you think about that? Okay, and if you look over there, um, you can download this. Oh, this is cool. I didn't even check that. You could uh, mute it, increase the volume, decrease the volume, and download. This is a really cool part of it. I didn't even check that before. So we've got a recording working, but if you do this for the first time, it's actually not going to work because I tested this myself the first time and it took me quite a while to get it to work dealing with Chrome and issues. So you might have a problem with Chrome, specifically if we work off a private, uh, I mean, a what we call a, um, a virtual private server. But if you're on local host and you're running this on your computer, I hear that local host doesn't have the same issue. But if it does, I'm going to show you how to um, resolve it. So what will happen the first time you do this is you will record and then nothing will happen, you know, and it won't even give you an error message. But I researched this and what's happening in the background is actually the voice, the, the your, your microphone that records on the computer um, is not activated automatically on the internet. So even though you're trying to record, there's no microphone and, and therefore it doesn't record anything right and um this so you need so obviously you need to have a computer that has a microphone so if you've used your computer for zoom meetings and stuff like that you have a microphone right um but if you haven't used it for things like that you don't have a microphone so what, use a computer that has a microphone if you had a you know sort of like a virtual meeting with with your computer then you know it has a microphone however the microphone is not always automatically activated and if you're using the chrome browser which I'm using the Chrome browser actually by default does not allow your microphone to work on sites which are not um, transmitting over HTTPS. So when we are testing and we are doing this off a virtual server and sometimes even localhost, we will not be transmitting over HTTPS, which means Chrome views it as an insecure website. So my virtual server is viewed by Chrome as an insecure website. So Chrome automatically blocks. It doesn't even, I don't even get that question of saying, you know, this website is trying to ask for permission because with other websites, Usually when the voice recorder is activated, the permission gets activated and then you'll get a pop-up that says, oh, this website wants to use your microphone. So this happens like if you're going to Zoom for the first time, Meet, you know, Google Meet or any sort of like, you know, place where you need to use your microphone, you'll get that pop-up that says this website wants to use and then you'll need to grant it permission, right? So you don't even get that pop-up with this 
sort of uh, setting if you don't have HTTPS enabled over there because Chrome just blocks it by default, right? So I did lots of research. How can I unblock this thing? And da, 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 da. And there was actually like no way to unblock this. But of course, I didn't give up. I kept researching. And I came across this article, which is a lifesaver. This article was written in Medium. It's literally two paragraphs. And the only important thing in this article is this highlight over there, right? This highlight over there, it shows you how to actually allow insecure origins this is a very dangerous thing to do if you don't know what you're allowing okay and and personally after doing this and after testing my application i would go back and disallow it so that i don't leave it by default allowed because then if somebody hacks my virtual server they could hack into my voice you know and, and and listen in on my conversations and things like that those kind of things you hear about not to say that chrome is not doing it anyway they're just blocking everyone else from doing it now, um, what you need to do is, if you're on localhost, you might not have this problem. So you can skip along to the next. If, if you played this the first time, right, and your recorder played without an issue, you can skip this section and go to the next part of the video. But if you did this and the recorder didn't play, this is what you need to do. You need to follow along with me. So in this article, um, you will... Um, just click on this link this is all you need and it's been highlighted by many people right so just copy that link even though it doesn't look like a link but you go into chrome and this only works on the chrome browser so if you're on i, I think extremely doesn't even play on safari and some other browsers you know so for this you need to be using chrome so you go to chrome and you paste that link into chrome all right and as soon as you place that link into Chrome, it takes you to this part of where you would have never found this without this link. I don't even know how Chrome expects us to find this kind of thing because I searched everywhere for it. And when you get here, you will see it will take you straight to the section that says insecure origins treated as secure. Now, all you need to do is to find the URL of your Streamlit application, including the port because it also allows different ports. So whatever the port your Streamlit app is running on is very important. So you must just highlight this whole thing, copy it as it is, go back there and paste it there, right? So this HTTP 178, this is my virtual server and you can see it's HTTP, it's not HTTPS. That's why we've got this problem because Chrome blocks all HTTP. And then after you've pasted this, right? This will be disabled. You just need, to, you know, it will be the default sometimes. You just need to open it. It will have been disabled and then click enabled. Right? So this would have been disabled. Click enabled after you've pasted the link there. And remember, once you're done with your development, to come back here, remove that and disable it. Because by making by enabling it, you're gonna create lots of other issues of other people getting access to your microphone. And this is this this secure is not just for the microphone; it's for many other things that Chrome blocks. So as soon as you're done with your development, do not forget to come back and disable this and take it back to the default. Because the sec the default is actually good for your system. Once you have done this. There'll be a, this thing will, will, will notice you've made a change. Like, like, let me say disable there. It will notice you have had a change and this, this relaunch will happen because there's no save button. So you just need to go back there and click relaunch. Okay. So for me, I'm not going to do that because I didn't actually change anything. Right. But that doesn't solve the problem yet. After you've done that, you then, you see next to the, because now you've just enabled the, 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 the insecure site, but you need to actually enable the microphone, right? So once you've done that, you click on this, right? And you'll see a lot of other things. We know it's not secure. We are developing, there's a development site. So you go into, um, you'll see all the permissions that the website has, because I've enabled this permission. So when you come here the first time, um, this will not be there. 
right so it will just only say reset permissions or whatever so what you can do is go to site settings at the bottom there right after you click site settings you can see that the site that you're on is this one right and then um you need to just under microphone say allow don't allow other things you don't need okay under microphone say allow before when you came here this would have been grayed out you wouldn't even have been able to change it so you have to do this first after you've done this this is now you can change it and you can change this on normal websites you know like zoom and whatever but your insecure websites which don't have https this is grayed out you can't even change it so you need to do that first and then so enable allow microphone and then I think the sound as well, allow that. So those are the two things you need to allow, all right? And after you've done that, you can then close this and then you can refresh your site and then you can try it again, all right? So let's refresh the site and just test this again. So you need to get through this test. You need to get through this test before you can even continue. If you can't even record, um, the, the, this app won't work. All right. So you need to make sure you've tested all of this and that this plays and let's see it. You need to get through this. All right. So if you can get to this part, then you're able to proceed to the next part of the tutorial. Okay. So the next part of the tutorial is transcribing. All right. So let's look at our, um, our tea. So we need to, uh, transcribe but actually before we transcribe let's make our app look a little bit nicer okay so we're gonna add the title that you see it that you see at the top there so that's why i didn't want to delete all of this yeah i'm just gonna copy it and paste it you can just paste it directly there any anyway right and then just remove that so this what this does is that it just adds a nice title all right scholar online talking assistant all right talking assistant and let me see i want a nice emoji um i want lots of emojis over here so let's see the robot emoji um hi just click on the voice recorder and let me know how i can help you today so this will just add a title to your website and some text and here you can add whatever text you want will just be displayed on your website to just make the website look a little bit nicer all right then once we've done that, we're going to get into the transcribing part. And for transcribing, we're going to use Whisper. So we've used Whisper last week and it's very, very simple. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. If you go to the API open AI documentation, yes, yes. Something else I forgot that you need. You need a open AI. Open AI. API key. All right. So you're going to need an open AI API key, but this is very simple to get. You just go to our platform dot open AI.com. All right. And if you're here for the first time you sign up. Okay. And after you've signed up, you can go get your API key. All right. So let me log in cause I already have an account. So you will come here for the first time you will sign up and create a new account. Some P nowadays open air is a little bit strict with the new accounts. I know I've seen some of, you know, my sub, you know, guys that work for me struggling to open an account. You need a phone number now and you need to get a code and some networks are not recognized. It's a bit of a hassle. So hope, luckily I'm so glad I had my account from, from a long time ago, but so I'm going to just log into my, to my open AI API um, account. Okay. So once you've logged in and you've, we've created your account without issues, if you just go to the, I think they've changed this a little bit. Yeah. So if you just look at the menu to the left and you, and you look under API keys, all right, if you click there, you will see API keys over there. All right. And, um, you might have no key and you need to create a new one, just create a new one, give it a title and copy it. Okay. You're going to need the API key for everything that we're going to do here today. And I'll show you where the API key goes in the code. Okay. So that's how you get the API key. Once you've got your API key and you're ready to go, we're going to start with transcription. So transcriptions is voice to text. We will take this 
voice that we have recorded and transcribe it into text. And to do that, we need the Whisper API and this little bit of code over there, which is very, very simple, okay? So you first start by opening this file location and then creating the transcript and then doing that. So you can actually just copy this code as it is, right? So let's paste that in there, right? From OpenAI, import OpenAI, and the client is OpenAI, right? And then we're going to need an audio file locate file. So the, this audio that we have created over there, we need to obviously save it as a file, uh, an MP3 file. So I'm going to update this and call this location. Actually, I'm going to call this audio location right so we start by audio location right and then we transcribe we're using the model whisper one and all of that and you can check what other models are available because i'm not i think um i'll also link this description right so for delay tts this is text to speech um, I think Whisper One is the only one, isn't it? Whisper, let's see under Whisper. Yeah, Whisper One is the only model over here. Okay. All right. So, um, Whisper One is okay. We can just use that. And then we're going to, so we create an audio file and then we do that. So let's put this inside of a function. All right. So let's call this function um create create a voice no 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 transcribe text to voice cool paste that in there and then return transcript this is a transcript object, so you don't want you want the text part of it, okay? Um, how do I know this from experience? Uh, but you can check it even the last video from last week. You need the 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 the, 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 the you can just say transcript or text to, to get just the text, and then this can take in the audio location as a function. So which means over here, after you've played the video, we can actually like not play the video. Okay, we cannot play the video and we can instead just um, transcribe this, get the text, right? Transcribe that text, right? And then st.write um, that text. So we can just write the text that we get over here, but we need this audio location, okay? So this lo audio location um, can just be like a, a location that we create in our virtual server. And I think I have it down here. I'm just going to copy it from here because I don't want to worry about where it is. All right. I don't want to get it wrong because um, ideally you want a direct location, you know, I mean, a, what we call a, an absolute path to where the, where the file would be saved. And at this point, this audio location, there doesn't have to be a file there. This is just a location where you will save the thing to. So when you create this location the first time, you could call this anything and the, there's nothing there, but you need to find the file path accurately. So this is a file path within the my VPS. Otherwise, you could also just do it like that and not have the full path and then it will just save it in the same directory where you are right now so if you are in a certain direction you just do this this will just get saved in the same direction maybe let's actually leave it like that and test it out like that you know so it will save this wave file in the same directory and then you can just do whatever you want with it so the audio location is this audio.wav we know it's make it's it's making a wav file because of the documentation from 
um, the creator, okay, that this is an audio WAV file. If you didn't know, you could just obviously check with the documentation because there's many versions of WAV files you have. I mean, there's many versions of audio like MP3 and all sorts of things. And if you look at the transcribe speech to text, um, you can see all the different versions that it takes in. It takes in MP3, MP4, MPEG, MP, you know, MV, whatever. And it also takes a WAV file, which is the file that we are going to be able to, to make. So we are good. And there's WebM and there's many different versions of audio files. So we are working with this one. So we can give it a file name. So all we need to do is to now save these bytes, okay, into this wav location it's a very simple function to save a file i think it just says this is it over there let me just copy and paste it over there um dish, dish. all right um okay we've opened this audio location so we need to open this location right as an f and then write the audio bytes okay so this will now um write the audio bytes but if the file didn't exist you might get an error so we need to just um import os at the top over there um let me import it even the import os and we need to use os over here to make directories if they don't exist to create this file so after we have um saved our file there um we can do that right dish 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 yeah um and i'm not sure if this is really necessary but we can check actually i'm gonna try running this without this and see okay so um audio location we're just gonna open this location of this new file that we've generated with a wav file and we're gonna write these audio bytes all right then after we've written this audio bytes um we now have this audio location we're gonna feed this audio location in there and this and then this is going to start by opening this audio location uh, thingy and then it's going to create a transcript and then it's going to create the text and then for now we can just write the text you know and see yeah and this client by the way we need to have it in here all right we need to have this client in here and we need to, we need to initiate it with our api key so remember when i told you about the api key that's what you need in there. So I think I've got it in here done. I just wanna mm, API keys equals to that. Let me just paste that in there and then define the API key from the config. Okay, I don't think we need JSON in there. All right, so what I've done over here is I've just defined what my API key is, all right? And remember when I said get the API key from OpenAI, you could just, you know, paste it in there, whatever your key is. You just paste it in there, it will also work, all right? But in my case, I prefer to save it inside of my config file because I've already created a config file and I've saved it in there under a variable called API key. So inside of that config file, you can you can do the same thing. You can create a file called config. And then inside of that file, you just say API key is equals to, and then you type your API key like that. Um, you would ask why we wanna do that, you know, just paste it in here. It's really up to you. But if you generally tend to, you know, use Git for version control, or maybe you share your files with other people, and this is just for now the complex stuff, um, you don't want to be sharing your API keys with people. So you want to generally save it inside of an environment. Sometimes I just prefer to put it inside of a file like called config where I can uh, go and save and change all of my secrets in there. And, and then I just exclude it from Git. So every time I do Git, I, I don't, I don't include the file. So it's never, it never goes with the rest of my code and then I can save the key somewhere else. Otherwise, if 
you you might even forget you pasted your API key in here. And then a friend of yours the other day says, you know, yeah, you, you did that app, that app, that talking app. Can you just share the code with me? And you completely forgot you once pasted your API key in here. And then you just go and you, and you copy that Python file and you send it to your friend. And then the API key is in there. So things like that, you want to prevent your key being shared with other people. Anyway, once you've done that, you now... um have that uh, file that should be working um the open ai now will be activated the client will be activated there and the audio file will, will be able to open that um audio location and create a transcript and then return the text and then we can uh, uh, write the text so what will happen here is we'll get the location um we will save this audio bytes we will do a transcription and then we will write the response. So this this will just be a, you know so it will just write back to you what you've just said. Okay, so let's test that this works. Tush tush. All right. So let's close that. Um, Python. Let's actually remove remove the file that's there first and then paste this new code that we just written. All right. Dish, dish. Right. And then you just need to do um, streamlet run. So What's happening here is you're also importing OpenAI in the same place where you're running your Streamlit app. Um, you're importing config in the same place. Um, generally, you know, yeah. Let's 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 start the app and see. Uh, this is not how I did it the first time, so I hope I don't have major error or issues with it. Okay. So if everything works well, what should happen? I should be able to record, but in this time the player won't be displayed because you see I'd removed that code which was displaying the player. There was a code, um, this pie we don't need anymore. There was a code there that was displaying the player. So I removed that and we're gonna be doing something else instead. And I just wanna check if this without making dirt will give me an error or something like that. So let's Let's go straight with it. So this take this should then display back to me what I've just recorded. Good morning. I hope you're having a great morning today. There you go. So it used the transcription API to transcribe all of this and return back exactly what I said. So what I said is now in text format. So I can now feed it into the text completion. So we now know that our transcription service is working and it works way faster when you're not transcribing YouTube videos, eh? Cause it took a while the last time when we were transcribing YouTube videos, I think I waited close to a minute, but if it's shorter, it does the transcription way faster. So our code works, this is amazing. So now what we need is the second part of our code is to do the chat completion, okay? So we're going to call this chat completion call. All right. And for the chat completion call, what we need is the chat completion API. All right. And for that, we can go to text generation in our documentation and then go to chat completions. And this is the code right here. Okay. So basically you need the client as well. So we can already start because sometimes I tend to forget to import the client. You need the client every time, all right? Using the same API key. And then you just need this response object, okay? So let's paste that in there, all right? You can check the model that you're gonna use and then the message is list. All right, I'm just gonna um, actually copy the this message is the only message we actually need. All right, so let's remove, let's leave that. All right, and then let's define uh, messages here. 
and paste that is you know user message and this user message um this will be the text okay that gets fed in here and this text can come into the function at the top over there and then here instead of messages we can just show the message we can instead of an empty list we can put the messages back in there like that okay so we start by initiating the client and then we create the messages object we don't need you could have more messages if you want you could have a system message that defines what that gives this thing personality and stuff like that you could even give it a have an assistant message that helps it understand maybe previous responses whatever but we want to make this super simple and we only have a user message with a text and we will reinitialize this every time assuming you're asking the question for the first time and then this text just get fed in here and then you get a response and this is a response object and i want to just use the latest gpt 3.5 model so for that i'm going to go into models and i will check the 3.5 and i want to use this one okay this is the latest 3.5 model it's also the cheapest by the way so i want to use that model instead turbo 11 or 6 and then you get a response so let's get back to our um, where we were before so we can see how to pass this response okay so we need to return this okay but this will give you an error so the documentation is actually hasn't been updated because this this is this is not going to work this used to work before so what you need to do is to say response.choices so this is no longer a json object it's actual you know python object so it must be response.choices at zero dot message instead of passing it like a like a json object all right and then dot content and this is if the response was successful so obviously you would want to run this thing properly and put it into a try catch you know be able to catch errors if there's errors in here and things like that but like i said i'm going to do a very simple tutorial for beginners so we are going to just assume every time this application is going to run without errors which is not the case uh specifically with open ai uh, we get actually it's very yeah there's a lot of errors so maybe sometimes this doesn't work maybe because there's an error but maybe that's one out of 20 times it doesn't work okay so we'll get um this response right dot choices at zero dot message dot content this will give us the response content which will be a text and you can just return that okay so we initialize the client okay we initialize messages and then we do chat completion good now we can call this right to get the answer okay so instead of saying text over there okay we can still say text over there and then we can get the api um a response right is equals to chat completion call text right and over here we can write the text and then we can also write the api response all right so we can write the text in fact we can write the text in here before the response comes back Okay, then after we write this text, we then um, get the API response using this function over there at the top, which will return the, the, the response from the API. And then we can write what that response is. Okay, and, um, and then we can see what the API, what the API said. Okay, uh, but it will still be text. We are building this step by step. So we are step number here. Okay, so we have transcribed, we are calling the API, um, and then we are using this, we are, we, are, we are here. We still have to now convert that text to speech again, right? So once we've done this, let's just save this and test this. And I, ideally, when I'm building for the first time, especially as a beginner, I highly recommend you use the same approach. Build your applications step by step and test it as you go along. If you are building test functions, build them as you go along so that you can, you know, you know this works. So, so for now, I know everything up to here works. So if there's an error, it's gonna be in the new, what I just wrote now, okay? 
so let's go back here let's stop this let's clear this let us um remove app.py the old uh, thing that was there let's um write it up again and we're gonna paste what's in here okay we're gonna paste what's in here so we didn't need that to make dirt i suspected as much okay and all right then let's do streamlet run app.py so for now we're just displaying the text that we are getting from from our thing okay the next step would be to um do something with that text okay so once we've done that um let's go to our app let's refresh it all right we still see the recording as if nothing's happening but there's more there's more to come okay so whatever we type we should get a we should get that printed back to us and then we should get an api response to it okay why did the chicken cross the road So we should get a printout of the transcription. Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? So you see the transcription takes a little bit longer. Look at how quickly this response came to get to the other side, like boom, in a split second. Okay. Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? Okay. Then once we've done that, now we've got this text. We can now use our text to speech. That's the last part, the last block, the last puzzle. So our text to speech is this one over here. No, this is not the one. Is this the one? Okay. Let's just um narrate here. Text, I mean not narrate, but like navigate. So text to speech is interesting, right? I actually tested this for the first time working on this tutorial. I want to integrate it into some of my applications, but like there's so many use cases. I'm just so excited, but I wanted to test it out today. And I thought, let me test it out with YouTube and have fun with my students building this stuff. Right. And this would be a great project to put into your portfolio. Don't forget that. Eh? Now, text to speech is an AI that takes text and reads it out like a person. I mean, this is going to replace so many apps out there that you should charge an arm and a leg to do text to speech. Right. And I'm just so excited about this. So basically, this is the code for it. Very, very straightforward, right? So we're just going to copy it. We don't need to copy the client, right? We just need the text-to-speech part. So we're going to do the same thing and write the function, the text-to-speech function, text-to-speech, text-to-speech AI right and paste that in there so the speech file path um currently is the one that we're gonna need to to feed in here so which means we need to define a file path and you know this can be an empty file path it doesn't matter we'll define it and then this thing will write it right so let's just do that paste that response create so the model this is the model this is the voice and this is the input right so this input is actually um the text okay so this is actually the the api response that must go in here that must be read out. So the input here is this API response, which means it needs to come here into the function at the top. And then we'll get a response, okay? So, so the function, what does the function do? It calls the client, which means we need to define the client. It calls the client, um, audio speech it creates, 
uses this model um the voice and so forth so there's different models here i know for sure there's tts1 and tts hd and all sorts of things and they're all priced differently so if you look at your pricing guide i always have my pricing guide open so that i can check these things out before i see it build that throws me off my chair so you'll see there are two different um the tts is not per not not one five per thousand characters i mean this is like really cheap i'm not gonna pay even that right and then the hd is just about double that it's still really really cheap so it depends on what are your use cases and i use the tts and it's pretty decent you saw you saw the reading was pretty decent i mean i don't know why you would want to use hd you know maybe when you're not for your youtube videos maybe i don't know but this is pretty decent and this is all i've used okay and the whisper one is even cheaper than that but this is per minute of a recording okay or round it off to the nearest second all right so they they'll charge you this by default if it's more than one minute if it's two minutes you'll pay this times two if it's three minutes and so forth and so forth so the kind of things we are using for the chatbot it's not even gonna reach a minute so you're gonna be paying not by not six every time for every for every time you call whisper okay so so that's another thing. This voice thing is going to cost you a bit more because before you were just paying, you were just paying for the um, GPT-3, right? This one, which is not per, not, not one zero per thousand tokens. So now you're going to be paying for this. You're going to be paying for this. And then you're going to be paying for, for, the, for, for, for these ones as well. Where was I? Yeah. So you're going to pay three times. You're going to pay that for not, for not, 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 whatever. Then you're going to pay this to transcribe. And then you're going to pay this to read back. So you're paying double three times for every time you're using this. So think about this if you want to build a chatbot, if it's really necessary for you to have voice. That's why I haven't implemented voice in my app yet. Because people don't want to pay for my app. But they're like, oh, but you don't have voice. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll have it the day you start paying for the app. So now, um that's that and the voice okay so let's go through the voice so there's different voices here allo is the one by default and i and it's a male voice so i didn't like it but you can play out the different voices here so you can see the one that you like all right the sun rises in the east and sets in the west all right Echo. in the heart of the city there is a large park all right fable the library is a quiet and peaceful place on the train chugged along the tracks carrying passengers to their destination Nova. In the kitchen, the aroma of freshly baked bread filled the air. Shimmer. The beach was a popular spot on a hot summer day. So I liked Nova, personally, you know, and, but you can use any one that you like, right? And I'm not sure that the voices, they charge you differently, okay? I think you can pick anyone. So I've, I'm going to use Nova. Nova. So let me replace... And you must get the spelling right, eh? So rather copy it from there. So here on, on my code where it says alloy, replace that with the voice that you want. Otherwise, just leave it as alloy and it will just be a male, default male voice. Now, um, once you have the response, let's go back to the code. You need to just say response stream to file the file path, okay? This just saves um, the response into a file. So this speech file path, right, is a location where you want this MP3 file to be saved, right? So what, what, what we need to do is that we need to define this path. So let's go up in here, okay? After we've done that, the next step, and it's gonna be an MP3 file. How do I know that? Because I just saw that in here is mp3 and let's assume it's mp3 so speech dot mp3 all right and and after you've done that then you can call this this doesn't have to return anything because it doesn't return it just saves the thing when it's done okay so once you've defined where you want your mp3 saved you could just say text to speech ai um, then you could call that file path there and then the API response. Okay. The API response is now that text. Then after you've done that, 
Um, obviously, you want to play the audio. There's no point in saving the MP3 for the sake of saving it. We're going to go back into playing our audio again. And for that, I have to just remind myself how to play the audio in here. We can just do ST audio. Okay, let me see what I had on my code there. Okay. Yeah, just ST audio. That's it. Um, so we can just do ST audio and then spill this file path over there. Okay. Speech to audio file path. So if you play this before you do that, obviously this will be, there's no file actually called speech to MP3. This file will actually get created with this once you run this code. Right, so this file will get created and then it will save the file in there as speech.mp3 or we could call it audio file. Let's give it the same file name. Audio file, audio response dot mp3. So this is the audio file, that's the audio response. It doesn't matter what you call it. And then it will save it in there and then it will say, and then it will read, it will save that. So it'll, this this um, API response is what we'll get in there. I'm just going through my code again. If you hear me talking like I'm <laughs> talking in circles, I'm just processing it in my head to make sure I've got no errors. Okay, so another thing to help you sort of understand what's going on here is to comment your code because it also helps you as a developer to know what's going on here. So over here, sorry. Over here, what we're trying to do here is to save the recorded file. Right, then over here we want to trans transcribe the saved file to text, okay. And then over here is we wanna um use um um the API to get an to get an AI response, right? And then over here. We want to read out the text response using text to speech TTS. Okay. Right. So now that is done, we can actually test this out. And this ST audio is what actually displays that uh, audio player. That audio player is displayed by this code that says ST audio. All right. So let's save all of this. Um, let's stop this. Let's clear that. Um, remove app.py and open it up again. And paste all of that. And we actually, I just realized we don't need OS anymore. Just, just so you can remove that you do not need it and then let's just see stream it run coolio if i've made no errors this function this app should it should take us back to what it was before all right so you get an audio recording you ask the ai a question let's ask a shorter question so you know, the transcriptions and everything will go quicker. So let's ask it to um, tell me a joke about. Tell me a nice, respectable joke about farm animals. All right. A joke about farm animals. So it starts to first transcribe because it wanted to see the moon. That was quick. Why did the cow go to outer space? Because it wanted to see the moon. <laughs> That's really cool. That actually went faster than I thought, eh? <laughs> um, because everything was quick, it was able to read quicker. So let's let's get a long um let's get something longer. Um let's get something you don't have to restart this thing all the time, by the way, hey. Um I just well, don't want it to freeze, that's why I do that. Um, um tell me a little bit more about honey badgers. All right, so we're asking a question and tell me more about honey badgers. You'll see the response comes really quickly and reading this response will now take a little bit longer. So let's just wait. As soon as it's done, the recorder will, will show up there and then we'll be able to play it and see. 
here you go it was one minute 20 so i get charged per minute so this will charge me for two minutes by the way <laughs> honey badgers also known as the ratel are small mammals native to africa and south asia they are known for their ferociousness and have a reputation for being tough and fearless predators despite their small size honey badgers are known for their aggressive behavior and have been known to take on much larger opponents, including lions and venomous snakes. Honey bat. Okay, I won't read all of it. Okay, so guys, I'm so excited about this and and all the use cases and how we'll integrate it into some, into some of my own applications. I know I wanted to build a YouTube <laughs> app today, but yeah, I thought this would be more interesting. And yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed it and. Of course, leave me comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next time.